you've got your mortgage in principle, you've agreed to buy a property, the application is submitted, what next? Well, your application will go through a process known as underwriting. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking it down, explaining what it is, the process, and everything you need to know about it to give yourself the best possible opportunity to make sure your mortgage is agreed. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because there's some real nuggets in this that will really increase your chances of getting that mortgage offer. Welcome to the channel. My name is Michael. I am a UK qualified mortgage broker. This channel is all about making sure you guys understand the mortgage process to give you the best possible chance of those favorable outcomes. Let's get on with the video. So once a mortgage application is submitted and fully packaged, and by packaged we mean all the required information and documents have been sent over to the lender, your application goes through a process known as underwriting. And the person who carries out this process on behalf of the lender is known as the underwriter. So to get your mortgage application approved, that underwriter has to be happy that the level of risk your loan poses to the lender is at an acceptable level to that lender. And for them to reach that decision, they focus on five key areas. I'm going to go through those five now. So the five areas lenders look at are credit reporting, criteria issues, an affordability assessment, the property itself, and then there are also fraud and money laundering checks carried out. So let's look at each of those individually. So credit reporting. Well, this to a large extent has already been done at the decision in principle stage. So provided nothing has changed, the vast majority of applications are, have already met this requirement. And the reason I say the vast majority is because not every lender's the same. Some are slightly different in the way they do this. So some carry out further checks upon a full application. So you may hear the terms soft check and hard check. Certainly a lot of them at decision in principle do a soft check and then a full application, a hard check. Now it's not exactly clear what the difference is in this. I know certainly for a soft check, they don't record as a check on your credit report so that other lenders can see a check has been carried out. But there are certainly more in-depth checks done. And one area that I know some lenders do do is at dip stage, they might only search one of the credit referencing agencies, where at full application stage, they might search two or three. So this is an area where sometimes people can become a cropper thinking that they've passed the credit searching, but they don't actually pass when it goes to full application. It's quite rare, but it does happen. So for example, say you've checked your Experian and it's all clear, but there's an issue at Equifax and that lender checks one at dip stage, but then both at full application, it could raise an issue then. So it is always worth checking the full picture. And as I've mentioned many times, check my file is the one place to do that. There is a link for a free trial in my bio. If you've not done so, go and get that done. But in the majority of cases, this has been done and it doesn't crop up when you go to full application. So normally if you've got your dip, the chances are you'll be fine when you then go to full application. Criteria rules. Every lender has their list of acceptable criteria. What they accept for certain situations, policies, the list is quite long and thorough. I certainly can't go through all of it and all the different lenders now, but just to give you an example, it's things like your age. So your age application, your age when the mortgage finishes, employment history, type of employment, your residency status, your nationality, the property, source of deposit. The list is very extensive, but it's things like that. So they're checking your application meets all their policy rules and it only needs to fail on one for that underwriter to probably decline the case. Now, a lot of lenders decision in principle systems are also set up to check the vast majority of this with the type of questions they ask. So again, if you've not answered one of those questions correctly or something comes to light that's not in fact true that or that was misrepresented at decision in principle stage, or if it's one of those criteria things that isn't actually asked at decision in principle stage, you could have your decision in principle and then your mortgage application fail on a criteria issue. So again, this is where I think, in my opinion, it's vital to use a mortgage broker because us mortgage brokers, we know the lender's criteria criteria like the back of our hand inside and out. So if we know something about your situation that means it would be outside of a particular lender's criteria and policy, we certainly wouldn't put your case with that lender. So it can save you a lot of time using a broker. They know what they're doing and they'll be able to find a suitable lender. Now, one of the big ones, affordability assessment. Okay, so this has been done to an extent again at decision in principle. However, nothing's been checked. But provided nothing changes, then you will be fine. But what you need to make sure is that your income has been calculated in the way that that lender calculates it. 
because that's how they will do it when they get your wage slips and documents. So again, use a mortgage broker who knows how each particular lender calculates income because they're all different. If you wanna know about calculating your income, check out the video I've put on screen now that goes through it in more detail. Same again with your expenditure and your debt. There's a video as well I've done on uh, how debt affects an application. But again, all that has to be keyed correctly. So this is where you, maybe your bank statements come in and the information return on the credit file. They'll check that against your application. So if you've not keyed, for example, that you pay in £500 a month on childcare costs and they say that on your bank statement, that's really going to affect the amount you can borrow and it could result in the application being deemed unaffordable. So again, you need to make sure anything a lender takes into account is input because they will find out but hopefully everything's fine and the underwriter deems it affordable so the next one is the property that property again that you're buying has to go through some checks to make sure it's acceptable to the lender and this is where the mortgage valuation comes in the first one is the check-in that the amount you're paying for it is actually what the property is worth they don't want to be in a situation where they risk not getting back all the money they've invested should you default and the property be repossessed so they want to make sure it's worth what you're paying for it then they'll also check that the property is of an acceptable construction type that the standard is okay and they're happy to secure a loan against it it's habitable there's no issues as well sometimes such as the serious ones subsidence heave damp and all those sort of things so again before you go to full application tell your broker the property you're buying anything that's slightly quirky with it solar panels or certainly tell them of its leasehold things like that so they can check before you go to full application that the property is suitable. And the final one, fraud and money laundering checks. So the money laundering side of things refers to your deposit. They've got to be happy that the money you're using to buy that property as your deposit meets their criteria. And it's certainly not from any ill-gotten gains regarding money laundering. And then the other area is fraud checks. Now this is where it's a bit difficult to elaborate on this too much because lenders keep these checks very close to themselves. They don't divulge too much information. There are systems out there databases they can search one of which is known as hunter this is where lenders can share information between each other so say you've applied to a lender for a mortgage and you've lied on your application or there's something else that particular lender wasn't happy if they record it on the hunter system other lenders can then see this information they also do checks on such registers such as CIFAS some lenders do this automatically as part of the decision in principle process but not all so you can get to the stage where if you've got CIFAS markers fraud markers for example and you don't declare them it could mean that you get right to the final stage of your mortgage application and because these kinds of checks are done at the very end you think you're almost there and then lo and behold the lender declines and with the fraud type checks the lender will just decline your case and not give you any information and they won't give brokers any information so it's then up to you to go digging and hunting to find out what the issues are and that can be tricky so if you do have anything in your past certainly within the last six years make sure you tell your broker up front so they can go and speak to lenders and find out whether it's going to cause an issue later on before you start spending money on surveys and mortgage fees etc hopefully though in those five areas there's absolutely no issue and your mortgage is approved and then you are granted what is called your mortgage offer and that is it agreed and it's on then to the next stage but what should you do if your application is declined for any of those reasons well the first thing is to not panic it's not always the end of the world yes it will show as a credit search but provided you're not doing more than four or five searches in a month, it won't harm your credit rating very much. It's a very minor thing. I think a lot of people get hung up on this and think it's the end of the world. And it also won't alert other lenders that your application has been declined on the credit referencing agencies. It just shows as a search. Obviously, if there's more serious reasons why it's been declined, fraud, for example, and they put it on the Hunter system I mentioned, then yes, that could potentially be a bigger issue. So the first thing to do though is to try and find out why if you can understand why you can solve the issue so it could be maybe you've too much debt and you need to work on improving that it could be that you failed a policy or criteria issue in which case you then find a lender that is happy with that criteria issue that caused the problem the last time but also bearing in mind that new lender has to be happy with all the other things as well but hopefully you can address the issues and replace the case with another lender and try again 
It happens to brokers as well. I had one about six months ago, a really complex case, and we had to try four lenders. Eventually on the fourth lender, we got it agreed and it was a happy ending. So it does happen. We try and minimize it, but sometimes decisions don't always go our way and we have to try again. So don't give up hope. How long does the process take? Well, it's a bit of a how long's a piece of string question. Depends on many factors such as the complexity of the case, how busy an underwriter and a lender is at the time, which lender you actually approach, some are quicker than others, how long it takes them to book the valuation in. So hard to give an answer. I tend to tell clients if it's a relatively straightforward case, one to three weeks is about in the normal. If it's more complex or there's adverse credit issues, it might be a bit longer, say three to six weeks, just depends. But what you can do is to try and speed up the process, there's a few little things, make sure all your documentation is on order, it's accurate and you've got it available at the time of application. And also be responsive. If your mortgage broker or the lender, if you've gone direct, asks you any questions, try and respond with accurate, honest answers as quick as possible and provide them with any additional documentation they require. And that should hopefully speed up the process and get you to that offer stage a lot quicker. But once you have got your offer, it's on to the next stage. The video that will come up on screen at the end of this one is all about that next stage, the conveyancing, the solicitor's process. So if you want to know what happens after you get your offer, go and give that a watch. I hope you've enjoyed the video and you like the channel. If you have, consider subscribing, smash that like button for me, leave me any questions in the comments and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.